This is ridiculous. I'm never going to pass this test. Uh, I can help you out. Oh, really? Sure, I have these note cards with the answers on them. You just take them to the test, and... What's going on here? Oh, hi, Gigan. Space Godzilla was going to give me some cards to use on my engineering test this week. Dude, you were really going to let him cheat? Um, no. Step off. I'll help him pass the legit way. By studying. Poop. I see you have to learn a few standards. Let's start with the first one. ENGR STEM 5. Students will select and demonstrate techniques, skills, tools, and understanding related to energy and power, bio-related communication, transportation, manufacturing, and construction technologies. Oh, well, what? In short, it says safely learn to use common tools. Okay, I got my goggles. Good. Remember to wear those at all times. Let's start with power tools. If a power tool doesn't work or has a damaged cord, report it to your instructor immediately. Don't use it, whatever you do. And, if you do have to unplug it, don't yank it by the cord. Grab it by the plug and pull it out. That's because it could start a fire, right? Right. Wouldn't want a fire starting. Which is also why you shouldn't work with an open flame around things like paint or lacquer. Oh, gotcha. You should write that down. No, what, Gigan? Well, how about engineering STEM 2? That seems to be your next standard, and a very important one. Students will identify the impact of engineering and technology within global, economic, environmental, and social contexts. Wow, that sounds like a lot. Not really. What it really means is, describe the history of engineering. As I said, that sounds like a lot. You got your pencil ready, Godzilla? You know it, man. All right, let's get this down then. Mechanical engineering was noticed as a profession in England in 1847 and 1850 in America. But before that, James Watt improved the steam engine in 1778, which led to the invention of steamboats, locomotives, and vehicles. Now, Mark Eisenbard developed the first boring shield for boring under the Thames River. Okay. But I thought that was pronounced Thames River. No, it's the Thames. Everybody knows that. Duh. Anyways, after that, Alfred Nobel invented dynamite and experimented with nitroglycerin. Of course, those are very dangerous explosives, and he blew up his brother and several other people in the process. But he did become extremely rich after he found a way to harness the power of explosives. He actually had labs in 20 different countries. But, so something good would come out of his work, since, of course, that was used to harm many people, he created the Nobel Prize. That was him? You know it. Anyways, Nicholas Joseph Cugnot invented military gun tractor to haul artillery for the French in 1768. They didn't like it. But hey, it was a big step. William Murdoch was one of Watt's staff engineers, believe it or not and he developed the three-wheel steam engine. He kind of got fired for working on that too much. But without the Romans designing aqueducts and roads, none of this other stuff would have been possible. Nice, Godzilla. Good job on remembering the Romans. Yeah, remembering. Now it looks like all you have left is Engineering EA-3. Students will demonstrate prototype development. Yeah, I gots to do that one. Multiple parts of it. Uh-huh, I suppose you have to identify appropriate modeling techniques? You know it. All right. Well, I've actually been working on something, and I have a prototype for it. Oh, really? Yeah. Check this out. This is a catapult that I made for class last year. As you can see, it's much smaller than an actual catapult would be. Does it work? Of course it works. A prototype is a working model of the actual product. It's usually first of its kind, and been traditionally built by hand. Like this one. 
made out of popsicle sticks, tape, a rubber band, and a spoon. It looks like it doesn't work too well. Shut up. Prototypers usually build many, either one or a hundred, maybe even more. It really depends on the size and complexity of the product. Hand-built prototypes like this one are usually very expensive. Really? I wouldn't pay you a cent for that. Now, of course, mine's not going to be very expensive. But others, like, say, an automobile, would be very expensive. Since these suckers can get pretty expensive, most companies have started using software, you know, to make them digitally. Like CAD programs. While building a prototype, you know any difficulties and then fix them for the real product. For example, when I was building this, I noticed after you launched it a few times, the rubber band would break. So when I built my final model, I found a new way to throw the spoon so that it would launch the projectile, and that way it wouldn't break after a couple launches. Really? What did you find out? I'll show you. So as you can see, I made this catapult out of wood to make it a lot sturdier. I also gave it this plank in the back, and when you push down on the plank, it launches the projectile. So you see, Godzilla, the prototype actually helped me perfect the actual product. Whoa! So, Godzilla, are those four standards all you need to know for your test? No! I need to know much more for an exam such as this. I need to know about open and closed loop systems. Those are easy. An open loop system is also known as a human machine system. The machine can't do what it's supposed to do, not in one work cycle, without something from a human operator. See, they have to take the input, and then it's the process, and then it's the output. Like a completely automated factory. Oh, I get it. So people have to keep putting things in the system to get what they want. Yeah, exactly. But what about a closed-loop system? Well, you see, if you put input into a closed-loop system, it compares and adjusts, then there's the process and the output. Then we give the machine feedback, it compares and adjusts again, and then just keeps going from compare and adjust all the way back to compare and adjust. Oh, so we only have to put something in at once, and then the feedback. Right. See? Thanks, Gigan. Hey, by the way, would you know anything about these seven resources that are in a system? Oh, of course. The resources are energy, materials, time, capital, tools and machines, info, and, most importantly, people. You see, energy run things, electric or human. Materials, well, you have to have materials to make technology, and you better use good ones, too. Time? Well, of course, everything takes time. You have to have time to be able to do it. Capital is money. You have to have money to pay for materials and other resources. Tools and machines? Well, they make the work possible and easier. Information? Well, you need to have knowledge and understanding of what you're doing so that you can meet wants and needs. And then, most importantly, people. People have the imagination to come up with these things we have to make. And they also have the skills. Without the people, none of it would be possible. What about machines? People have to build machines, Godzilla. Right. Do you need help with anything else? Basic materials. Make with it. <sighs> well, the basic materials used in products are composites, ceramics, metals, and plastics. Do you know anything about joining them together? Of course. You see, there's this nifty thing called eHarmony.com. And that's not what I meant. I know, I'm just joking. You can join or combine things with snap joint fastening, heat fastening, gluing, really anything that'll make them go together. Nice. I just have one more really important thing I need your help with. All right, what is it? I kind of don't know the 10 step design process. You don't know the 10-step design process? 
That's probably the most important thing on your test. What? All right, let me start it off for you. The first step is design. You gotta define the problem, you know? You just gotta identify the constraints and the objectives. Figure out what you're doing. Step two is research. Gather information from your available sources. You know, the internet, libraries, interviews and people that you know who might be in that kind of field. Figure out how people have solved this problem or similar problems. Next, you've got a brainstorm. That means you need to have multiple people. Dang it. I hate people. Ah uh ha -huh, ah. Uh -huh. Gotta get used to people, Godzilla. Anyways, get your team together for a brainstorming session. Generate a bunch of ideas. No idea is stupid at this point. You see, if you cast out any ideas, people might be less willing to put their ideas forth. Step four is vote. Get rid of any unrealistic ideas or any that surpass your constraints. I'd say get about the ten best ideas and put them all up on the wall. And then you can all vote and comment on these ideas. Step five is focus. Bring in some advisors from outside your team. Ask them to look at your top ten ideas and evaluate them, you know? Use this to focus and refine your ideas. It'll help you find a better one. Step six is delegate. Break your team down into smaller teams. And then have those teams agree on responsibilities for refining and developing your ideas. These teams should give feedback to the other teams. Gotcha. Step seven is prototype. To show how your ideas will be, you know, used, build a model. You know, I already showed you about prototyping. Oh yeah, I remember that. That was like five minutes ago, Godzilla. Yeah, that's why I remember. Step eight is test. Design a test for your prototype. That way you can figure out what's wrong with it and move on to step nine, which is refine. You see, in this step, you fix what was wrong with your prototype in the experiment. And then you can go back to step eight and see if there's anything else wrong with it. You can do this as many times as necessary, but after that, once you finally think you've got everything fixed, go to step 10, which is present. You have to prepare a presentation, of course, for the board or whoever's paying for this product. Just show what all you've done from steps one to nine. And then if you get it approved, well, the development of your product begins. Booyah! Wow. Thanks, Oodles Gigan. I couldn't have done it without you. No problem. Now let's take a look at your notes. Yeah, you're gonna fail. <laughs>